What's up? We're in part three of our Unreal Engine game AI series, and in this series, or part of the series, I should say, we're going to be setting up sight sensing in our game AI so that they can see the player instead of in our last video where we were faking it, and I'll show you how, where we got with that right now, if you're following along. We got our AI to be able to fake being able to see running and attacking in our last two videos. And this time we're actually going to set up sensing the legit way. All right, let's get started. So inside of our blueprints folder or inside of third person, we're going to go into our enemy folder and check out our AI section and find our enemy controller class. And to this controller class, we're going to add a sensing component. So go up here, press add, Ooh, dern, type sensing, not sensing, perception, my bad. Pawn sensing is kind of an older one. This is what we use these days, AI perception. So we'll check that, select it. If you look over here, you can see this little AI perception drop down. There's a senses config with an array element. We want to add a new element and we're going to call that sight config. If you drop this little arrow or click this little arrow, it'll drop down open up sense and you've got all your little settings right here you can see the range 3000 that's kind of far for our purposes right now we're going to say 1000 for testing and lose sight at like i don't know 1250 1500 is good you can also change the peripheral vision this is in half angle degrees so imagine like 90 is 180 because it's probably for both eyes so anyway um yeah we'll leave that there for now it'll be easier to see if you look at max age this highlight that and it's like okay after you've sent them you can forget it we'll just leave that let's just put 10. you can leave it at zero and they won't forget but i kind of like having that as a value all right so we got our ai perception attached to our enemy character or enemy controller now let's go grab our third person character actually yeah and we're going to create a stimuli source so that way the perception component knows that some sense is being triggered so we create a stimuli ai perception stimuli source make sure you compile and save and you click on this if you see ai perception section i like to check auto register as source uh when it says register as source for senses click a little plus sign drop down menu and we want to add sight because right now we are adding sight and we might add hearing later it depends how much time we have i'm going to try to make these videos faster so that's another thing speed all right, so next thing is that we actually want to do something once we sense the player or the enemy. So back in our enemy AI controller, we're going to select our AI, percep AI perception, go down to on target perception updated, and click the little plus sign. And we'll get this little node that says on target perception updated AI perception. We can break this stimulus by dragging it out, and then you can see what we're working with. We got locations for the receiver and who caused the thingy all right so now that we drag that out and see what's inside let's take this stimulus and we're gonna go get sense class and this will be the class that we're comparing to and so if you drag this out here and do a double equals boolean you'll see that you can select the class you want we're gonna go does it equal sight and AI sense site and then we'll do a branch and for testing purposes we're just going to print a string to let us know if we saw the character all caps saw the player and sure two seconds is fine so since we set up that uh, fake vision we might want to stop that from triggering now because that could cause some issues if we can find where that's at. So we got this is player visible 
Blackboard thing here. We're going to modify this with the actually being able to see, which means we probably just want to get rid of here. Yeah, so this is our faking vision. Unplug this. So in our ba behavior tree, basic enemy, unplug our check to see if player is visible node, and we'll just find the target. Then we'll test that by hitting play. And he's just going to wander around. Of course, he's not seeing him. Unfortunately, the audio cut out even after the second time of me re-recording after it cut out the first time halfway through. So anyway, in here we want to make sure that you have uh, enemies, neutrals, and friendlies checked. That way the AI can perceive them. And I'm going to pause this because I don't want to be picking up all this static. I don't need to yap the whole time unless you guys just want to listen to me yap during this period of audio not being recorded. And here we are on a nice Sunday afternoon re-recording audio that didn't need to be re-recorded in the first place. It's quite frustrating. I'm probably here trying to think, hmm, something's not working. I wonder what it is. Let's go poke around the blackboard. We want to be setting this is player visible blackboard value and let's wiggle our mouse around a few times. A couple more circles will be good. I'm going to cut all this out. This is just like wait. All right, back in our AI controller class, we're going to drag off some pins. We're going to get our blackboard and we want to set that AI visible value on the blackboard. It's definitely strange to try to re-record this while watching the muted version. So I'm just going to sit here, say, drag off this pin, set value as bool. We want to set the key name and the key name needs to match the actual key name on the blackboard. But first, we're just going to give this a variable name. Let's call it like BB key underscore. I can't read that from here. It looks like B can see player compile. It's strange watching this like this because I already know what I was doing wrong. So see how that drag that out and it's setting equal to his site. That'll always return true, even if we lose sight of the player. So we're going to end up changing that in a little bit. So you can go to the blackboard and you can go into this Boolean value and you can copy and paste that instead of having to type it up word for word to match, just so you can make sure that it matches. Little Little cheats. Set that value in the variable. Okay. Notice how the AI is still chasing us. All right, so what we actually want to do is grab that Boolean value from our stimulus source, because this is always going to return true, as I was saying, or always be triggering, not returning true, but you know what I mean. If it's false or true, it's still doing the same thing. This is what we want to do. Plug this in. Of course, we like to move things around, give some squiggly wigglies, add this extra true false branch check. I watched the tail end of the Avalanche's game. I don't know if you guys watch hockey. I don't usually, but it was pretty epic. There was like an overtime score right at the end with like one second remaining. That was pretty sweet. So we're going to do a print string here just for test purposes make things more visual do 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 probably going to start speeding these videos up with each successive one <laughs> okay if you press highlight those you press control shift a that'll line those up 
Now we're testing again. Check that if the see that changed and is now triggered because the player or the AI can no longer see the player. So that's working as intended. Whereas before the player was always or the AI was always seeing the player even if he wasn't technically seeing the player. So that one now is set up. Good job. Okay, in this part, we're going to dabble in some AI debugger tools. You push the apostrophe button, which is actually next to the enter on your keyboard, and that'll open that up. And you can see there are some little uh, number menu buttons at the top, like one, two, three, four. Four being perception, three being EQS, two being the behavior tree, and one being looks like AI or the nav mesh. I can't, like I said, the screen's very small since I'm re recording audio over top of the video. Um, the ones that I like to use the most probably be the perception, which is four, and then also if our once we have EQS set up, we'll use that a lot so you can see kind of what's going on with the query uh, debug symbol sphere things in the map. Number four is also useful for perception, and that way you can see if you can the AI is seeing you or not, or if they're hearing you. You can also see the nav mesh if you press what zero. I wonder if I'll end up pushing zero here or not. There it is. All right, so that's it for sight perception. Sorry, the audio cut out like it did. Thanks for watching. We got more coming on the way. Peace.